This episode of Nuff Said is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Hey Nuff Said fans, Phil Parrish here. You're obviously fans of Marvel Comics and their characters. So make sure you check out the Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks podcast for weekly reviews of classic and new Marvel comics, including our Quantum Zone covering all things Quasar and the cosmic side of the Marvel Universe, comic capers for all things classic and new in the world of comics, and brand new starting in 2019, our Ultimate Spider-Cast podcast discussing all things Spider-Man. So remember, you can find all this Marvel goodness and more on the Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks podcast. Nuff said. I miss recording has started. I'll be honest with you. Hey, okay. kids, cats, and kittens. It's me, Charlie, the Professor Esser, and you are listening to Super Connectivity. I know I don't have a baritone like uh, Mr. Hill, but you know what? I think I got good points going for me. And the man with the most good points going for him is the founder of the feast himself. Phil, Phil, me, and Parrish. That's the guy. Hey, Philip. So, welcome to Super Connectivity, uh, uh, this long-running podcast of wonders and joys. As I said, I recently came across, and thank you, Facebook, for saving things for all eternity, because, yes, you have our embarrassing stuff, but you also sometimes give us great memories. I actually came across the original text on Facebook Messenger from one Robert to Williker Southgate, uh, saying, hey, you got some great ideas. Would you like to write a blog for us? And that's superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com, was born. And the rest is, they say, is history. Oh, winding up it all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, what to talk about today? So, Okay, so you know, I wanna I wanna touch base on this because this is something that has been bugging me. And I think I had candidate, and we're gonna have to see if it works out in Avengers Four: Electric Boogalore. Um, did you notice? As hmm. Cap is, it's gotta work. And he looks at his compass from the first Captain America, the first Avenger film, which isn't the first film in the MCU, but kind of you know. Is meant Chron- to be the start of it all. Chronologically, yeah. it kind of is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, until they do Conan the Barbarian, man. He's <gasps> back at Marvel! What does that mean? Does DC, does does Disney have the film rights to Conan? Oh, oh, that would be lovely. Conan in the MCU. Make it happen. Um, well, hey, time travel's coming up, man. We could see some, hy- some unnamed Hyborian. In Endgame, I'm sorry, Electric Boogalore. In- instead of Hercules, we'll get like Conan. <laughs> well, not for nothing. They can bring in Hercules whenever they want. Hmm. Oh, they might even make him a ginger because Disney already has Hercules. Yep. <laughs> Super connections. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, oh, you know, I still haven't looked up who played uh, Scalieri in Amadeus. Really got to look that up. Uh, <laughs> so I do think it was Willem Dafoe, but I'm not certain of that. And, you know, that's all I know we have no listeners. Because everyone says, oh, how could you be so stupid it wasn't Willem Dafoe? It was actually Sirhan Sirhan. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, see, that's what, that's how I got this gig, because I used to write in and tell Rob about everything he was wrong about. Why aren't you people writing in to say how wrong I am? That's right. We have listeners. Why aren't you listening? I mean, why aren't you writing? Yes, well, yeah, I mean, I guess they listen, but maybe I'm just never wrong. <laughs> Come on, people, prove them wrong. <laughs> Anyways, um, so anyway, but we see Cap looks at his lo- locket, or not his locket, his compass, because dudes don't have lockets, we have compasses. Has to do something. Point at things. <laughs> like a phallus. <laughs> um... <laughs> And in that, in, in what is his phallus pointing towards? Uh, a funny <laughs> picture of, but a picture of Peggy Carter, 
not Sharon Carter. And this was like, wait a minute, wasn't there like a whole thing? Like, oh no, we are, they're actually together now. And then it struck me. And this is my, and maybe they're actually going to even hang a, hang a hat on this, hang a lampshade right on top of it at the start of the thing about why him and Sharon aren't together anymore. Uh, because first off, he didn't know Sharon was his, her niece when they apparently started dating. Yeah. You know, it just knew, oh yeah, Sharon. You know, and who knows? She might have even been going by whatever her cover name was, which might have been Sharon Carver, because you know you have to start with the same. You have to have always had the same first name. Still kind of close. Still kind of close start, though. Start, oh. start with the same letter. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like David Barrister. You know, it's, we have this established that this is how you create an alias that no one will ever figure out, and also still always respond to your name because you know. It's not like I'm an actor or something that can respond to a different name. Yeah. So, um, I think it, so I think he it, did not know. I was going to say, no, I think it's just them dumbing it down for the audience, which they probably didn't have to either, but. Yeah. Well, you know, and I, I, you know, I haven't watched The Fugitive enough to know if that was actually something that The Fugitive did too, uh, which I think it probably was because I think when they made The Hulk, they wanted to make The Fugitive and they said, no, we don't have the rights to The Fugitive, but we do have the rights to The Hulk. I don't care, we'll do The Hulk. Uh, <laughs> Works for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, no, so what, I, what I'm thinking is, is that as we're, um, as we're discussing this, he didn't know, he doesn't know until she gets up at the funeral that it was her niece. Yeah. And now for nothing, that's why that kiss was real awkward in Winter Soldier, or not Winter, in Civil War, because he's like, uh, I didn't know you were my girlfriend's niece when we started dating. And, you know, and here's the thing. I get the feeling like Peggy, like, didn't want him to know because this was actually something that they established in the original timeline of the comic books, which is that Peggy really didn't want Cap to, like, come back to him because she wanted Cap to move on with his life because she had. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's this thing. I think that basically with Peggy dead... And him broken up because I think they broke up after that. I think it was like this is too weird. I'm not doing this. I mean, like I I don't want to be that guy who just breaks up with you because it turns out you're the niece of my one true love from 40 years ago. But you're the niece of my one true love from 40 years ago, and I don't want you to think you know, you're. I don't want you to think you're second best. But well, it's not even that it's that she's second best. It's that it's creepy and it's weird. And Cap knows that. Cap isn't stupid. Well, that too. He j just, everyone lied to him at that moment. Prior to that moment, when she stands up there and they're like, and apparently lied to Sam too. It's like, and Cap, trusting soul that he is, didn't do any research. I, <laughs> you know I, what I mean? I, well, <laughs> again, I mean, he's from the 40s, you know, it's... The, how much research did they do back then? And two, I mean, she knew before he knew, so. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Well, she was directed to do it. And honestly, my, my honest really thinking on the whole thing is I think that um, I think she was ordered to do it. And I kind of, here's my big belief. Here's my, one of the things we may get out of, out of Electric Boogalore is we're going to find out that Peggy Carter has been taking some infinity formula and has faked her own death. That she did the whole, oh, I got the mention of an old lady thing, basically for Cap's benefit and to throw people off her trail because double secret uh, thing. Wait, she's the one that taught Fury how to do it. And there were rumors that Peggy might have been, in, might be in Captain Marvel. Mm. So it wouldn't surprise me if. Tahiti. Maybe a, a little Tahiti in her. A little infinity formula to keep her going. And um, we're going to see at the end, you're going to see Fury meeting with his director. And it's going to be Peggy Carter. And they're going to like put like a, a gray wig on her. And she's going to be like chopping on a cigar. Because <laughs> you can still smoke in the movie. And the most important thing, Comic Book 101 in, uh, what was that? Was it was it in Civil War? Yeah. Uh, we had a funeral for her, but we never saw the body. Never saw the body. Don't see. We had a funeral for freaking Nick Fury. Never saw a body. Mm-hmm. Got a little bit of that dendrotoxin. Knocks you right out. 
get back up in five minutes later. You know. So yeah, that's my big belief is that Sharon honestly that was probably even a life model decoy thing. Because honestly all it needs to do is sit there and talk and basically have basic conversations then when, when the questions get too hard, it's just Oh, I'm older than demented. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I'm so sad. Oh. Or hell, they even have holograms and makeup. Who knows? Uh, well, yeah, it's like you know, just to just move on with your life. Cap. I love you, but that was freaking forty years ago. Don't Lord. think I didn't call the for you, but I did kind of get married and have a life. And honestly, I would have to be like the most awful woman in the world. If I married a guy and was still secretly in love with you, like that lady from Titanic, <laughs> the advances get freaking, they're meeting in heaven. And it's like, and her husband's like, dude, we had like 40 years together. Uh, you had like literally, you had sex with this guy once. Whoa. And that's the love of your life. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess me and her kids weren't all that special, huh, hon? No, jeez. Yeah, no. Yeah, really. It's like, you know, a little dark when you think about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, you know, because uh, Rose from Titanic, she had a whole life. She had grandkids and stuff. And Peggy has grand... Well, I don't... Yeah, I think she has grandkids. In fact, you know, you might find out her grandkid the whole time. Because there was that rumor that she married Gabe um, and that Nick Fury was actually her son. Um, but maybe, you know, it goes by Fury because he didn't want to get, he didn't want because he was actually a Carter to have that influence his rise in S.H.I.E.L.D. It's a code name. It's a code name. Because there's always another Nick Fury. It's like James Bond. Oh, uh, <laughs> hey, but the, so that's my big, that's my big prediction. That's like the one thing, they're going to resolve the awkward kiss. And I think that it was always meant to be an awkward kiss because it was like, this is not the time to de. de unpack all this. And then, of course, we're going in hiding, and we're going rogue, and we're doing this and that. And it's like, there's really not going to be a time to have a good conversation about this. But once everybody in the universe, half the people in the universe is dead, oh, they actually give another point. And this is an important point. Um, oh, wait, did they say it that way? Hmm. Oh, no, yes. Yes, they did. Black Widow says, in like one of the more recent trailers, she says, Thanos did what he said. He killed every half of every living creature on Earth, which means mm. plants get a pass. Plants are like, oh, there's only half of you left. Oh, sorry, herbivores. Guess it's, guess, guess it's just few of you now. Well, um, well wasn't, that, wasn't that part of Thanos' point, though, too, is like he said there, there isn't enough natural resources for all this life in the universe, so... I mean, getting rid of half the plants would have been, would have kind of defeated the purpose of hey, we got to save well, kill off half the universe to the save the resources. Well, except for the fact that the plants plants use resources. Yeah, but they also give you know, like oxygen and or like you know you can and, grow certain and other stuff animals get carbon dioxide which plants consume. There actually is a balance to the universe, and and honestly, if that just means the Cody got off. off <laughs> You remember the Cody? Yeah. That Everett Scrolls uh, and the Cree atomic technology. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we all remember that. Uh, and they got off scot free and they're like, ah, sucker animals, y'all dead. We plants are ruling. There's sentient plants in the universe. I'm just saying. Ah! Of course, yeah, you know, half the cow is going away. It's, 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 it's a little weird. Um, but again, quantum par- uh, pin particle infused ants, they survive. Now, is it just because that was just the lucky ant, one of the 50% of ants that were destroyed? We don't know, but it might have been something that, well, you know, maybe if you were infused with quantum energy, you survived. Like Hank Pym and and uh, and Janet Van Dyne and uh, and uh, Hope, you know, maybe being infused with the quantum, quantum or with the quantum particles of pin particles. The quantum goodness of pin particles keeps you around because you're you're here, but you're not here. Anyway, yeah, I, I think there's going to be a lot of surprises in uh, Electric Boogalore. I think we can, I think we can all agree there's going to be lots of surprises. There's going to be a lot. Of, um, it's supposed to be like three hours long. There's going to be a lot of something. Yeah. Uh, you know. Um. Yeah, but that's my big prediction as to why he's back with Peggy, even though 
she she's dead as far as he knows. And then it's going to be like, and then, you know, I think it's going to actually be kind of a wedge in their relationship because I think, um, you know, he's going to find out. He's going to be like, you've been lying to me this whole time. We could have been together. And he's going to be like, well, you dated my niece. You ordered your niece to date me. It's like, quit changing the subject. Yeah, Yeah, you know, it all comes back. Yeah, I guess so. Um, But... uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think that, that, that Peggy Carter... I think Peggy Carter is going to be in Electric... Well, she's definitely going to be in... I going to say, she's definitely going to be in uh, Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. And that we're not hearing about her being in Captain Marvel tells me that there's a lot being hidden about what we're going to see in Captain Marvel. Mm. And I think, I think Captain Marvel's going to... Because here's the thing. I don't think they'd be putting Captain Marvel right there as the prequel... If it wasn't the game changer, I mean, not for nothing, we may get Nate Richards Kang in Captain Marvel, you know, because they've said they have the rights to Kang. We may get Kang there. We may get Time Trap. We may get anything. There's going to be stuff that could be there, you know. There could be some 1940s technology. And not for nothing, as far as Tahiti goes, and actually, you know, it's actually the home base protocol. That actually brings you back to life. The Tahiti protocol is actually just the reprogramming of your brain. So she wouldn't have gone through Tahiti, but she would have gone through um, uh, the the home base protocol. Yeah. And who was the one who discovered the original Kree soldier, who uh, who they basically cannibalized to create the? Um, Wasn't it Peggy Carter? It was Peggy Carter, and not for nothing. Man, is that the 1940s for you? Hey, here's this clearly sent. Here's this clearly humanoid being. Let's just take it apart and see what it does. You know? <laughs> and then they ask, maybe that's why. Oh, wouldn't that be crazy if that's why the Kree are coming to Earth in this? Ooh. It's like you know, we lost one brother. We do not leave a soldier behind. <laughs> wouldn't that be wacky? So well, I. I yeah. Oh, I mean, that was like that was like the big thing on uh, what was it like two years ago when the CW did their invasion crossover when all the aliens were coming to Earth and they're like, yeah, you know why we're here? Yeah, we, uh, we, uh, we figured out Barry Allen can change the timeline. That's not good for anybody. <laughs> oh yeah, honestly, honestly, you know the problem is that you can't. Well, you'd have to take away his speed force in the current timeline. I think I'd do something with the dang speed force because the speed force. I think is they just wanted to kill him. <laughs> they're yeah. just like. Oh, that would work. Well, no, the problem is, is that if you kill someone with the speed force and the speed force just finds a new host. Yeah. It's like it's like any other demon. It's like any other thing trying to destroy the universe. You can't just kill it because you killed the vessel. I know, but I, I don't know if the aliens knew as that much about the speed force. They might have just been like, oh, this being can change the timeline, could wipe out our whole species. Let's just kill him. <laughs> I don't see how it's going to wipe out your whole, whole species. You're on a different planet. You can have a butterfly effect, but the effect does limit as it ripples and the fact of the matter is is that you know your species has already existed by this i don't yeah well i don't think no i i i'm i exaggerating i don't think they said that about wiping out the species but i think it was something about like hurting our empire or something or oh yeah, well that something. it could do because you know yeah. if he goes back in time then suddenly you know leonardo da vinci actually builds his flying machine mm-hmm. you know they get steam engines in ancient rome and then you have the empire of the earth and empire of rome or the Empire of the Planet Rome, actually. That's from the Tomorrow People. Yeah. Like the old, uh, some obscure BBC sci fi band. The original Tomorrow People, not the remake. I mean, the remake was, well, it was no Doctor Who remake. That's all I'll say about the Tomorrow People remake. I think they've done two so far. I don't think it's cut on yet. Um, as happens. But the old school Tomorrow People that used to air on Nickelodeon, that was my kid. That was my jam, man. But I mean, yeah, I mean, that would be like the easiest way to like set set the stage for Fantastic Four and MCUs having Nathaniel Richards in it, you know, or at yeah. least the mention in Captain Marvel or Endgame. Yeah, or both. well, exactly. Yeah. Well, and I, like I said, because Kang is officially Nate Richards, they, oh, what's uh, Marvel's Earth name? Walter Lawson. Yes. What if working on Walter Lawson's scientific project is also Scientist Nate Richards. No. From somewhere. We don't know where. Just like you, Mr. Lawson. Let's not t- <laughs> let's not talk about our past, shall we, Mr. Lawson? Excellent superlative idea, Mr. Richards. 
<laughs> just two people eight aren't even supposed to be here today, <laughs> and they're doing science because because Nate Richards. Oh, because Nate Richards knows about Thanos, or or he's or he's been missing since the Captain Marvel movie. Why? Oh, my son and his friends got trapped in uh, the multiverse somewhere. Yeah, something like that. Well, no, no, no. See, no, you can't. See, hmm, see, here's the thing, Phil. You can't use Nathaniel Richards, but you can use Nate Richards because Kang is can be used in the in an Avengers franchise, but Nathaniel Richards is a Fantastic Four character, and, and just like Rama Tut. So yeah, but it doesn't. It, Disney's about to. Uh... No, no, no. So, so here's the well, yeah. But here's the thing: is so they can introduce Nate Richards as Kang. Because Nate Richards is Kang. Okay, you, you got you to follow the logic in this, okay? Because mm-hmm. they may they may interweave characters as they do. Um, so Nate Richards is Kang the Conqueror, and maybe even Nathaniel Richards. And oh man, it wouldn't that be crazy? So Nate Richards goes back in time, has Reed Richards because likes to spread his seed throughout the universe. Oh man, you know what? You could even have. Hmm. Oh, here's crazy. Here's your crazy. That you're gonna get, okay? So in Captain Marvel, we find out that working on this project is Nate, who is from the future, because it's Nate Richards Kang. But then we're also gonna find out that he's he's also actually is Nathaniel Richards, because the reason he stayed in this timeline is because he fell in love with a human er, a human woman. Well, he is a human, but a woman from this time. I don't remember what Reed Richards' mom his name is, but it's gonna be like, you know, hey, we should name him Reed. Oh. So you get little baby born Reed in the 90s. So Reed Richards becomes a millennial as this growing up kid. By the time we get to 2019, him and Ben and uh, Sue going up in their rocket looking for dad. I don't know, man. It's because all I know is that dad took off at the end. man. We get, we can bring, you bring everything in. We get a uh, time traveling council of Nathan's Nathan uh, Nathan Richards and Nathan Summers Cable boom oh bam <laughs> so we got to get yeah, getting why is he named hmm? did Nate, did, did time traveling Nathan uh, impregnate the Summers family at some point no I, I, no, no I guess it's maybe not that uncommon of a name but maybe 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 um Jean's mom's maybe Jean's Jean's dad's name was Nathan did they ever say that. I don't know. It, 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 Cable's full legal name. I don't think that for. It, I think Nathan was like a, a middle name or something, but they just ended up using it. I don't know. Yeah, Nate Summers. Well, because Nate Summers is also X Man. So like, are all so all of these? They're all the same person. Cable and X Man. X X Man was like the Age of Apocalypse version of Cable. He was younger. He didn't have the techno organic virus, so he was kind of mm-hmm. more powerful. Yeah. Yeah, and then of course you have the Strife. Because you need a mirror, mirror universe. Clone. Yeah. Clone. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway. There yeah. you go. Yeah. I mean, why is Mr. Sinister obsessed with the Summers line? Um, uh, He sees the genetic potential. I don't know. I don't know. I just... Oh, well, because they breed true. Because all three of their kids, even the ones... That, all three of their kids that apparently none of them ever knew about. Mm-hmm. All three immensely powerful mutants. Which is why, as I say... Cyclops is more powerful than people let on because I do feel he can con- contact with those advanced sections. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. MC is gonna get them all. That well, what yeah. do you buy this article? That like, I saw something online. They were saying, "Oh yeah, MC is not even thinking of X Men and Fantastic Four yet." I'm like, "Yeah, you are." Which is that? I heard the exact opposite. I don't know. Okay. There was there was something this week. No, I didn't even buy it because they were like, "Oh, was- there haven't even been talks." Here. I'm like, "Of course there's been. Come on." No, I yeah, because the article I saw was like you know planning on X Men and yeah. merging X Men and FF in 2020. So I, I think that yeah, I think it's totally a thing. Um, and that was actually the other thing that I think is going on here. And I don't know. If, actually, I mentioned this. I mentioned this actually on the Iron Cast, but I didn't mention it here. And not everyone listens to all my podcasts, obviously. But remember how we were talking about man? Why are they rushing so much? to get, you know, Iron Fist and Daredevil and all these shows out so fast. And I realized why it is. Hmm. Because Netflix has the rights to say you can't use these characters for how many years, Phil? Is it two? It is two years. So, if the last Daredevil aired in 20, 
2019, in 2018, mm-hmm. when's the earliest you can have a Daredevil film in the MCU? Is it 2020? Uh, yes, 2020. Or, or 2021 if you do it January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, if you because I think it ended, it aired before Christmas. Yeah, so yeah. you could do Christmas Day film Daredevil the movie with our good friends from the. You could do the Defenders movie with, except for uh, what's her name, and Jessica Jones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But oh, maybe the maybe Doctor Strange will form Defenders for some crazy reason. You know, <laughs> maybe. And this is this is the thing. I think that basically. I think that basically maybe it ended less hostily between um, Marvel and Netflix than people like to think. But I think basically what the deal was was, look, you get these out so that we can use the good characters. Uh, well, two of them anyway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, Iron Fist. You know you know how I knew Iron Fist wasn't going? Well, actually, well, that, that was the whole thing. That Clark Gregg didn't get his Iron Fist cameo. Maybe they won't. <laughs> no, I think actually, I think Netflix didn't give it to him, um, because I think Netflix was like, "Oh, we don't, we don't want to have," because that was back when show. we don't want the stink of the MC, we don't want the stink of the MC universe on it. I don't know, because there was always this, there was always the fighting, and I think that might have been something that was going on there. But anyway, that he never got his cameo tells me there was something going on between Iron Fist and and, and everyone else. Hmm. Um, I think it probably was just Buck, <laughs> Buck being Buck. Fuck. Uh, uh, every time you you can hear my distaste when you listen to the Iron Cat, I say, "Ugh, fuck." <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I but here's the thing. So, 2020, late 2020, early 2021, you can have the Netflix Marvel film. You got to write a script for your MCU Marvel, or or put them on the streaming service. But you got to write that, you got to shoot it, you got to produce it. That can that's going to take basically two years to get from inception to completion. Mm-hmm. So it's basically, you know, we need to take a breath. But honestly, there's really no no thing there. And I think that Netflix went through the trouble because not for nothing, they could have held these things, premiered them later, mm-hmm. and still got their bang for their buck. Um, and also screwed over Disney, but they don't want to screw over Disney. And I think basically they reached an agreement that said, you know, we're going to run these three in 2019. So they're out there. Um, and we're going to do, we're going to do Punisher and Jessica right afterwards, as soon as we can get them out there. Uh, so you can get them earlier. And that way Disney doesn't just take everything that is DC or Marvel content off of um, Netflix. Yeah. And they're going to continue to have a relationship as a secondary streaming plan. So basically, I think what you're going to see is you're going to see stuff will premiere on the Disney Plus platform, and then we'll shortly have to go over to Netflix. I think Netflix probably has a similar deal with um, DC because where is where did Titans premiere? Everywhere but the U.S. and Canada. Oh, um, Netflix. Yeah, Netflix. Netflix knows what it's doing. Mm-hmm. They just didn't want to be an exclusive DC uh, Marvel content. They wanted to be able to have. They wanted to still maintain control over what they could do. So they continue, could continue to do a series of unfortunate events and all of their other great shows that they have, you know. <laughs> they do have a lot of good shows. Um, oh, anyway, so that, yeah, but, but that's, yeah. But they're doing something because I, I think everything except for Punisher was like mm-hmm. all of the four other shows, they all premiered, they all had, they all had a season in 2018. Mm-hmm. Daredevil, yeah. Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, Luke Cage all had 2018, and they yeah. never did that before. They spaced them out a little more. Yeah, and that- exactly. And 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 really, the only thing with Jessica is she's not yet. They, they're like still. I think they like. I don't think they fully wrapped Jessica Jones yet. But I, I pretty much am certain that we're going to get Punisher, and then almost immediately after that, uh, Jessica Jones. Yeah, but I mean, Luke Cage season two was June. Iron Fist was September, and then. Daredevil season three was uh, right in October, and then Punisher's uh, what January? Yeah, yeah. So you know, uh, yeah, it's it's yeah. And honestly, I will guarantee you that um, Jessica Jones uh, season three is going to be. Um, and they're they announce the canceling of um, Punisher after the after they've been out for a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. After they've been out a couple of weeks, and uh, then immediate, and actually, probably you won't even get a, you won't even. Basically, 
me and Maz, we're going to be struggling to catch up with these shows. Uh, especially if we're taking on uh, Agents of Field now, which is fine. But yeah, it's like by the if you if you wonder what why we don't have a Runaways podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, eventually, if we run out of content, because I mean, the, yeah, I don't think we're running out of content anytime. Well, not yet, but I'm just saying, <laughs> in a year or so, if you're like, oh, we're through all the Netflix stuff. But you know, we actually never did Daredevil season one. So yeah, I know. We actually could go back and do that, um, but you know, it's it is what it is. Um, anyway. So, yeah, so I do think that's what we're going to get with Netflix. I do think that in 2020, we're going to get we're going to get our Defenders announcement, and shortly thereafter, it's going to be the Defenders film. In fact, we'll probably get the Defenders announcement probably in 2019, late 2019, they're going to say. And, of course, you know, because you'll hear about, what you'll hear about is the secret unnamed project. Um, when, is Do- when is Doctor Strange 2 scheduled to come out? Is that scheduled to come out yet? I know. I heard. Let me double check this. But I heard on another podcast. I think they were saying it's been scheduled, but it might not be till like twenty twenty one, maybe. I mean, yeah. So let me look this up. Uh, yeah. Along those same lines. So, so yeah. So here's the thing. It's like I would not be surprised to see. You know, not for nothing. Uh, up from. You know, I would not be surprised to see that show up. See Luke Cage or Iron Fist. Actually, Iron Fist would be the funny one to have come up. Doctor Strange, just because here's this guy who, again, quasi mystical, Iron Fist. Um, although how they ended Iron Fist, that was a little weird. I mean, it's cool, but I didn't know he could do that with the gun. So it's like, okay, we'll go along with. It. Although they have the other one doing it with the sword, so I guess that makes sense. Um, okay. Um, looks like uh, Doctor Strange's two is shooting for a May 2021 release. So. Yeah, so it wouldn't surprise me if after May twenty one we get, or if we get, if we get, you know, if we get the defenders in there, so you know, maybe even, maybe even Daredevil, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist, who can all be available by twenty twenty one, and actually, so will Jessica Jones by twenty twenty one, you know. So mm-hmm. maybe that's basically it's like. We weren't even planning on doing these guys until then because we have so many other things. Yes. Yeah. DC Plus, if DC Plus breaks twenty comes out twenty twenty one or twenty twenty. Yeah. They may have as their whole thing. They may open with because the first one was Luke Cage. Hmm. So if DC Plus or not DC Plus, if Disney Plus opens like middle of uh, like. When did Luke Cage come out this season? Um, it was, it was like summer? June. June, yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. So if like June twenty nineteen, Luke Cage that when if they launch Disney Plus, and what they they and here's Luke Cage, wouldn't surprise me. That's all I'm saying. Or they'll do another character, you know, because it's not like they're short of characters, you know. It's, yeah, but I mean, but like you were saying, by 2021, if we get a, like away from the Avengers a little bit, I mean, you could have Fantastic Four, X Men, Defenders, because I mean, we got got the Netflix yeah. characters. You have Doctor Strange, you have the Hulk. They're gonna have Silver Surfer, mm-hmm. and we could even do the Champions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember, we already we already got Trigen, Terrigen, Gen- Terrigenesis crystals in the water supply. All you need is some girl in Jersey City to take a big old gulp of water. She's down at the Jersey Shore one day, and that's how you get infected for reasons. Oh, I thought you were talking about original defender or uh, original champions. I'm thinking Hercules, uh, Ghost Rider, Black Widow. <laughs> well, you know what? And, Not and, for nothing. and Angel and Iceman are on there. You got X Men. You're gonna have X Men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what I'm saying is, you could. You could do the best of both worlds. You do current Ghost Rider, who has been established in the MCU through Agents of Shield. You bring in our, we bring in Ms. Marvel, and because because by then Captain Marvel's back on Earth and is the super Superman of 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 Earth six one six or six Earth whatever they call the designation for the MCU. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you, you know, you can bring in Iceman, you can bring in Hercules. You can. Yeah. I'm waiting for Ares. I loved Ares in it because because he was a Dark Avenger. Because he was like, yeah, I'm working for the Avengers. Norman Osborn runs the Avengers. 
I don't, I don't, I don't see where the disconnect is anymore, Carol. No. Uh, because, yeah, because it was Carol. You know, Carol recruits him, and then she's like, "What? You can't work for Norman." That's when he's a villain. He's like, "How is he a villain?" Well, he kills people. It's like I kill people all the time. Her logic here, you know, because no. Ares is the best at what he does, and what he does isn't pretty. Because he's nope. a cross between Thor and Wolverine. <laughs> anyway. That's how they introduced Ares into the Avengers when they first recruited him. And that was during Civil War. Mm-hmm. As Tony Stark was talking back when Carol and Tony were friends. It was like, you know, you don't just need heavy hitters because he's trying to reform the Avengers. Mm-hmm. And he says, you know, you don't always need, you know, you don't just want a team of Hulks. Yeah. Sometimes you sometimes you want a Hulk, sometimes you want a Wolverine. <laughs> he says, well, what if I could find... Or it says, sometimes you want a Thor and sometimes you want a Wolverine. He says, what if I... Knew a guy who was basically Thor and Wolverine combined. And says, you know Thor and Wolverine combined? And he says, yep. And then he goes to a construction site. Because that's what gods do in this universe. They go and work for damage control. Just like Hercules did, ironically enough. You know, it's like, you know, we lift heavy things. And we do the work of a big construction thing. Hey, Thor, Thor and, had a secret identity for a while as a construction worker. <laughs> well, uh, he was a paramedic at one point. Was he a construction worker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right after he got rid of Dawn Blake, he went to Earth. He's like, well, what am I going to do now? I don't have, like, a human uh, identity. So, yeah, he. Uh, I think Nick Fury helped him set it up where, yeah, he was working for construction. And that's where he met Eric Masterson eventually, yeah. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Best, best, best uh, he, he, he did the old... Uh, um, glasses. He wore glasses. Yeah. Yep. glasses and pulled his hair back. Ponytail, yeah. Ponytail. Yep. Ponytail and glasses. Who could this person be? I have no idea. If only he had a ball cap. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> then he's completely unrecognizable. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's not as good as a fedora. Fedora and trench coat. You could be anyone. <laughs> That's what the shadow always used. That's a reference to the old school shadow, for those who don't know. Uh, you can never see anyone when they have a fedora and a trench coat. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Are we going to talk some comics? Oh man, I still I haven't even talked Punisher yet. Oh okay. Uh, oh okay. So we did. So I want So we'll do this real quick. Um, we got um the Punisher. So we got the teaser for the Punisher, and we do see we well we got teaser. Ima- well, we did get a teaser, but we also got teaser images of Jigsaw. Mm-hmm. And we see that you know his face is kind of in shadows, but what you do have seen his face doesn't look that bad. And apparently what they're going to be doing is they're basically going to be saying that, you know, what's Jigsaw is his fractured mind. And that maybe, and I'm guessing he's going to be seeing himself as having the shattered image of a face. Mm-hmm. Um, because he's in the head, uh, which, is, which is acceptable. Um, is he going to be... But he also... Is he going to be like Dr. Doom? Is he going to like have one little scar and be like, I'm hideous. Don't look at me. Yeah, exactly. They're definitely, I think they're definitely doing the, the, the Dr. Doom. It's not. It's not Deadpool face. It's one little scar, you know. Um, and not for nothing. Also brings to brings to bear the reality that we live in an age of plastic surgery. You know. Yeah. If you had one little scar, they're gonna fix your face. You know. And they fixed his face. It's like, yeah, he, yeah. He had a bunch of relatively superficial cuts on his face. I mean, yeah. It's he's got a couple of scars, but it's not like he. It's not like he looks like Jigsaw. You know. <laughs> It's not like he's a jigsaw puzzle all put back together. He looks like, you know, jigsaw looks like Frankenstein. Yeah, and, but, and, and to that extent. But is it is no, it no, just no. It, is it just like a play on like you know this guy probably used his looks to get far in life before because you know he was like seducing my uh, what was her name Madonna and uh, mm-hmm. you know and so Philip, what did I say about Deadpool as uh, Ryan Reynolds Deadpool own structure. Still has fantastic bone structure, know. and you know what? Do you want to see the one hundred percent proof that my theory is correct? Hmm. Because who? Because you want to talk comics? Let's talk comics. Who is at the table of villains that fights? Um, fights uh, the um, Black Panther in the twentieth anniversary. You see that guy there? Uh... They don't call him. His- Name, but it's not Man Martin Mark Hackett. But it's not Man Martin Michael. Look at his face. Oh, is it Jigsaw? 
yeah, that yeah, is yeah. definitely Jigsaw. And but it's his scarring is so subtle now. Because because um he lives in the era of plastic surgery. Mm-hmm. They can fix most major scars. Like literally, unless you get your face literally melted off by fire. And even then they actually honestly plastic surgeons work really hard to get these people looking fairly normal. I mean, there's a lot that they can't, and that is truly hard for those people. They're good people. They often sacrifice themselves to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. But um, in general, yeah, they they do fix your face if you get uh, horribly scarred. And so um, you know, what we can see from that image, that they are definitely downplaying the Frankenstein look. Mm Mm-hmm. Ironic that, of course, eventually Castle became Franklin Castle. I know Musa Frankenstein, too. Really should have read those extra issues. Uh, <laughs> uh, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, go back to um, uh, Capes and Lunatics and find out what was one of Lilith's favorite books this week from the Archie brand. Yes. It's actually one of the first times she's really called out an Archie book in a while. She hasn't called out an Archie book for high praise in a while. So I'm going to say that was a good one. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so I think that they're going to be working with the fact that um, it's that all of his scarring issues are all internalized, and I think he's going to be wearing the jigsaw mask mm-hmm. in it because that's how he. Because not for nothing, not only did he did, did did he get his face hurt, but he also broke who he was. He violated the central trust of caring for his comrade hmm. because Frank was his comrade, and Frank was the guy that he was always going to be there for. And he betrayed that. He betrayed that trust. And how do you go back from betraying that trust, Phil? How do you go back from betraying a trust? You can't. That's the point. Anyway, um, but yeah, so Marvel Knight's 20th anniversary issue. That was the 20th anniversary issue, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, the whole this whole series has been the 20th anniversary. Oh, okay. Well, as you do. Here's one thing I'll say about it, though. Um... Super interesting how it's playing out, man. And I don't know. So when did uh, when did so has King? They reveal in this Kingpin's been taking like Man Mountain Marco serum. I guess I. I'm... Yeah, he's taking on full on repulsive blast. He's like ha ha ha. But you know what? We've been getting that with Kingpin for a while. They've been upping his power level. I think that basically. Now, I am correct. That was Spider-Man who broke into the Kingpin's jail cell and beat the stuffing out of him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was um, yeah, okay. right, be- right before, um, yeah, it was like around the time of the first Civil War, yeah, because um, when Spider-Man's identity went public, Kingpin, like, uh, yeah. basically had a sniper, oh, just shoot whoever you can shoot, and he shoots Aunt May, and he, t- he breaks in the jail, beats the head crap out of Kingpin and says, you know, if my Aunt May dies, you're next. So. Yeah, well, exactly, because she- you don't want to mess. You don't want to mess with with. You don't want to take away Spider Man's moral compass. It's basically the moral of that story. Mm-hmm. And yeah, because I was saying that, and I'm thinking, wait, am I wrong on that? Because no one else is going. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And I'm like, maybe I'm totally misremembering it. Because something very similar happened to Bullseye when he mm-hmm. fought American Eagle. You know, an American Eagle, mm-hmm. you know, third string thing, but superhuman strength. You know, basically just above a man mountain Marco. And he's like, you realize you're kind of a pathetic villain. And of course, they, you know. As I always say, you know, they, they call out, um, you know, that with Bullseye when the Skrulls attacked mm-hmm. Black Panther and they gave him Bullseye's powers. And it's like, yes, you can throw things with deadly accuracy. You do realize we have circus performers in this country with the exact same powers. <laughs> I mean, you know? I think the story's coming. Either either Wilson Fisk is a mutant or he's had scientists experimenting on him because, I mean, yeah, it was the Kingpin's uh, scientist who gave Black Cat her bad luck power, so... Well, I mean, not for nothing. Well, yeah, and obviously you experiment on everyone else. You experiment on poor Marco. Exactly. You know, let's see how, how much we can up Marco's <gasps> strength, and that's then we'll get back. That's why he experimented on Marco. It's like, okay, he tells the scientists, okay, perfect the formula, then once you go to perfect, give it to me. Well, yeah, obviously. I mean, that could be that could be the reveal. And not for nothing, the mutant angle isn't, because, you know, Slug, remember Slug? Mm-hmm. The Florida version of, uh, of, um... 
Kingpin who is just bigger and fatter. A lot more out of shape, <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Well, they have actually, it's been, if you read his official Marvel Universe entry, it is suggested that he actually may be a mutant because no human could carry around that much extra weight and That's, not be a mutant. Exactly. It, exactly. So uh, it may be that Kingpin is, in fact, a mutant like the Blob. Again, these people who have just this massive amount of body mass yet somehow are not suffering an ill effect from that massive body body mass. Although, in the Slugs case, he actually does sit a lot. Yeah, he's. A, I think he even has like a hover chair or something, maybe. So like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah he's. So he he's may have more not walking. Yeah, but you know, he may have that. He may have that thing where he can just increase his mass, like Ironclad. You know. Maybe. Okay. Remember Ironclad? Remember Ironclad from the UFOs? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I really want. I really want to return. This is just me, and just because I have my love of Ben Grimm, and Ironclad is the villainous version of Ben Grimm. Mm-hmm. And yet, ironically, the UFOs and the Fantastic Four never actually fought until, well, when I say relatively recently, I mean like the 80s. <laughs> it might have been the 90s when they first met each other. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah look at that. They did not actually. It wasn't until like the fourth time they died that they, and got brought back that the UFOs actually got to face the Fantastic Four. Yeah, it took a while because they were like the evil version of the Fantastic Four, but they were like Hulk villains for the longest time. Yes, well, they are classic Hulk villains. They are the best Hulk villains um, because, but, you know, if you ever go to their original origin, you actually have just, it's a very, it is basically meant to be an exact replica of the original Fantastic Four, including uh, freaking nettling Sue Storms and, oh, Mr. Steele, I didn't know you were a coward. Oh, oh don't call me a coward. I'm fighting words, lady. Um, because they're because Vapor, who is their their Sue Storm, but evil or more evil than Sue Storm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, man, that whole origin, and you and you really, and they kind of canoned it in this most recent in in the wedding special. Like I said, that was the only story worth reading in that wedding special. Um. <laughs> Sue Storm is kind of, kind of, uh, 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 involved in other people's lives. You know, she she nettles. She nettles a lot. Um, when no one asked her to nettle, uh, <laughs> I'm not saying women should be silent. I'm just saying they shouldn't use a subordinate position of manipulation to gain their strength. They should they should say forthrightly, Benjamin, you're a great pilot, and you know you can do this. Man. And had she appealed to his, had she appealed to his vanity instead of his 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 uh, inner self doubt, because of course he has a lot of self doubt. Remember, you know he was best friends with Reed Richards because he's actually a super genius, but mm-hmm. no one recognizes it because he's from Brooklyn. He's from the Lower East. Actually, he's not from Brooklyn. He's from the Lower East Side. Back when that actually what didn't mean that you were from you know millionaires. Um, mm-hmm. He was from Alphabet City. Back when Alphabet City meant something. Oh, <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, that's why it's fancy. It's the Y and the end. It's the end of it. Avenue Y, I think, was what they were trying to imply. Even further down than Avenue Q. Oh, <laughs> the really Lower East Side. Uh, yeah, you, I tell you, Avenue A, people get freaky about sometimes. Um, you know, during the 70s and the 60s, Avenue A was a pretty rough town. But... Um, <laughs> You go all the way down to Avenue Q, you know you're in the wrong set of town. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, in this Marvel Knights, I mean, spoilers, at the end, yeah. it, it looks like the the people who were trying to rip the uh, device off of Black Panther or Hulk, Daredevil, Punisher, and Elektra. Do you think that's... I don't mm-hmm. think that's real. I think that's another, like, implanted memory or something. No, I think that's 100% real. Oh, really? You think? Oh, because, yeah, yeah. Because I think, I think we had a reason... Yeah. And here's the thing, because okay, because this all comes back. You know what? Oh, but it, no, it, Phil. Phil, mm-hmm. who was the Sentry's best friend? Was it Reed Richards? No, his real no. That was uh, Robert Reynolds' best friend. Who was Reed Richards? Or who was the Sentry's best friend? Or who 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 whose best friend was the Sentry? Let me put it that way. Whose best friend was the Sentry? Uh, who was the one person who felt at home with the Sentry? Who? Wait, who was it? It was the Hulk. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember the Hulk? The Golden Man made Hulk not not hurt. Yes. Because Gamma hurt. And the Golden Man made Hulk not hurt. Hmm. So, 
It's my belief that because this is all goes back to the century device that makes people forget that the century ever existed. Because mm-hmm. we're going to be seeing that in Gotham later this season. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think the Hulk absolutely wanted the device because he wanted to bring his friend back. Maybe I mean I could see that. We too. don't know when this story actually takes place. As a point of order, That's we true. don't know when this Marvel Knight story is taking place. Yeah. But and, also. But also, too, I yeah. was playing the numbers. How many heroes does he does the Black Panther remember coming for the device? Four. How many villains are sitting around the poker table? Four. Yeah, but none of them are a Hulk, and none of them could take the Black Panther. But you're, alter- you're altering memories, though. I mean... Yeah, but the whole point is, is he got his memories back. Or did he? Well, I think he did, because... He's got quasi mystical, the power of the panther compels you thing going on. So I think the power of the panther opened it up and put him where he needs to be. Maybe. So that's, that's my, uh, so no, I absolutely, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a misdirect. I think it's all a very intentional action to have him know that, yep, this is exactly what is real. Yeah. Because I think that at the end of the day, that makes more sense. I think Mm -hmm. it makes more sense that it's real than it's not real. Um, you know, as far as, and like I said, it makes sense if you think about if this takes place after the century is wiped from everyone's memory, which does happen in during the modern Marvel universe, because we do see the Punisher exists at this point and Daredevil exists. Everyone that we see here exists within the confines of the Marvel universe. Yes. When the century theoretically disappeared. So the idea that the Hulk wanted to bring the Sentry back mm-hmm. makes gives a proper motivation for why they want to steal the box. Hmm. And um, yeah, I could see all those characters wanting to forget their something, at least something out of their past. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, well, no, not forget some. No, no, the Hulk wants to bring the Sentry back. Oh, okay, okay. The Hulk wants, and that's the whole idea. Then, of course, it falls into the wrong hands. And then Doom steals the device and yada yada, and then it plays out from there. And yeah, and again, like I said, that that Hulk and uh, that that Doom. Now, of course, that doesn't necessarily work with the timelines of the Doom. And um, if, if Kingpin has that kind of power at that point in history, doesn't necessarily make sense unless maybe they made Kingpin forget he had all this power. Maybe. Oh, wouldn't that be crazy? Kingpin forgot he actually had superhuman strength, <laughs> but it would go along. With what we've seen, because they have had him survive just crazy stuff like getting thrown into a car with enough force to shatter that car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if those are just bones in there, those are those bones. Those are Catwoman bones now. You know, talk about Gotham. You know, <laughs> or or maybe this is the story where they explain. Yeah, Do, uh, Kingpin forgot for a while. Doom gave him strength because I mean he. I mean, look what he did when he created Titania. Well, yeah. I mean, well, yeah. I mean, obviously. Of course, that was using alien technology, but he's used it once, so he certainly remembers its existence. You know, you think Doom um, can give someone super strength? Come on! Oh no, he absolutely could. Well, honestly, as I always say, this is like 1940s technology. Yeah, you know? I mean, actually, to be honest with you, the biggest problem that you have isn't giving people superpowers; it's having them not go nuts with power once you give them superpowers. Yeah, you know. Um... And apparently Doom doesn't have rocket boots in this Doom bot. Um, or, at least, or at least he, you know, that's the thing. I mean, that's always the thing about this is like, we assume that's not a Doom bot, as we say. Oh, huh. Would a Doom bot be affected by a forget ray? I don't, uh, I don't know. Cause yeah, well, we don't know. I mean, yeah. Does it just affect organics or, <laughs> but, you know, but what well, I'll give well, you this much. It, who it was might... one of, who was the one person? That Emperor Doom couldn't control. Was it well, one of the few people? The Vision. Yeah. Artificial, artificial brain. Don't work the way you, you, you crazy organic brains work. Well, that's what I was going to um, say. It probably didn't affect the Doom bot, but where's the Vision? Again, in this story, where's the Vision? <laughs> I don't know. He's off world. He's Maybe this is back when he was with Scarlet Witch, and they're like, you know what? Maybe it's well, better people forget. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, let's not forget, you know. Wanda's got her own business going on, and she may be like, you know what? Maybe the world's better off if people just forget that superheroes ever existed. True. So we can have a nice, quiet life here in the suburbs. <laughs> um, you know. 
True. Like I said, we don't know when this story takes place, so anything is possible. But it certainly, apparently, exists in an era where police brutality is a thing, and cell phones are a thing, but then again, sliding time. Sliding time. Um, yes. Um, yeah, and we do uh, also understand why T'Challa re- initially rejected Frank Castle's offer of help. Aside from just the fact that he was a cop who, you know, has yeah. been beating on people. <laughs> As if he almost as if he felt a need to punish them. For exactly. Some yes. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, no, that was a good book. I was a little sad it wasn't the denouement. It's like the or the the conclusion of the story. I thought, oh, it's the 20th anniversary issue. This will be the big. Yeah. yeah I was like, nope. There's yeah. another one. No, <laughs> there's more coming. And um, I thought that was good. Um, did love Immortal Hulk. Uh, Mortal Hulk was probably I, I'll agree with Lil. Probably one of the best written books. Number ever. eleven. Yeah. I, honestly, that whole initial narration by the writer—that mm-hmm. is such good writing. That is the kind of stuff that you know you're going to just see quoted. That is like quotable writing that will become icons of. See, that's like that's actually good writing, unlike what you might read in, like, say, The Watchmen, mm-hmm. which is just a lot of writing. <laughs> well, yeah, this is not that? Uh... <laughs> this is good quotable writing. Isn't it Al Ewing? Uh, I mean, I th- wasn't he the? I think he was the same writer who did that Ultimate series we like, you know, with Black Panther and Captain Marvel. And oh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't have the book in front of me right now. But um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. Does it say who's writing this book? Who wrote the book? Al Al or, Ewing. Or is that oh Al Ewing? Okay, yeah. Okay, huh. great. <laughs> so yeah, so there you go. He's a great writer who wrote a really who really is writing good words. Mm-hmm. And not, and he's not being over abundant in his words. He's using the right words to tell a tale. And he's doing it amazingly well. So yeah, yes. uh, Immortal Hulk, whatever number this is, is amazing. And I love that the artist, whoever artist 11. is on this, I'm sorry, eleven. I don't yes. count numbers. Phil, you know I don't know issues. You've commented on how I don't know issues. I don't I'm know not a issues. Number, man. I, know stories. I'm, I don't know. I'm not a numbers guy. You know, it's just probably. Ironic that I work in payroll, but still, I'm not a numbers guy. Um, <laughs> until this podcasting thing catches on. Oh, by the way, I gotta say, hmm. um, you saw Rob posted. Hollywood is buying up podcasts. And you know what that made me think? Hmm. They made a Battleship movie. Why not us? What about our what? What about our Quasar podcast, The Quantum Zone? What about all the um, capes of lunatics? Yeah, come on. Oh. Yeah, I mean, well, I, honestly, I w- we'll have to see how they adapt it, but it would not surprise me. But if I someone mean, just said, like, well, you have to ask, like, what is? And the example they give in that is lore. Lore was a podcast about lore, so mm-hmm. it's a nonfiction podcast, and we are a nonfiction podcast, even though I do go into my own fan fiction a lot. But uh, that's my whole thing is like, if someone brought the whole Southgate Media Group, you have like a whole network of shows. Well, yeah, honestly, no, we're we're, we're a content machine. Exactly. And we work cheap. So, you know. Um, <laughs> Legendary Pictures, you just brought the the Toxic Avenger. By the way, wouldn't it be great if the Toxic Avenger shows up in uh, Godzilla? That's that's all I got to say about oh, that. <laughs> Always churning. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, 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 um, I'm trying to think of anything else I had to talk about. But no, I loved Immortal Hulk. Immortal Hulk was fantastic. But um, yeah. You read it. But yeah, it, like we were talking before with little fun capes and lunatics about Immortal Hulk, and you were saying like you know Rick Jones is all hollow and stuff. Meanwhile, General Ross doesn't seem as hollow and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'm because- sure I'm sure it's something between the difference between Rick Jones and Ross. But I was thinking, what if Rick Jones didn't have a complete soul? What if like he was bonded with Marvel for a, for years? What if when Marvel died, he took a part of Rick Jones with him? Well, I mean that. I mean that. I mean that's a possibility. My, my, the thing I go back to in this is that here's there's an idea about hell that no one has the same hell. Yeah. Every hell is unique to you, which means that what you see in hell isn't what you see in hell. And as an example, uh, there was one four verse Mephisto storyline where he's traversing the lands of Mephisto and he sees Gaia, his mother, mm. his real mom. His real mom, uh, well, his biological mom, Gaia, chained in hell. Mm. Because it's all about the things that are trying to tempt you off the path to face Mephisto. Yes. And then he realizes, no, she is Gaia, she's Mother Earth, she is 
and this is this realm is as much a part of Earth as anything, and her essence is here as well. She isn't trapped here; she merely is here. And he gets to, and he moves on from her. And it is this idea that they make Thor see Gaia at that moment, so that he will steer from the path to save his mother, like they do with Doom all the time. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe they're they're transformed due to the you know the Hulk's. Uh... You know, it's like look yeah. what you did to this poor innocent Rick Jones boy. Well, but, exactly. It's, but that meanwhile, yeah. Ross is the all powerful enemy who has his Red Hulk powers back in hell. I guess. Yeah. Well. Well. Exactly. But and again, like I said, these are this is all this is all for the Hulk and Banner's thing. Although it's interesting at the end of Immortal Hulk, which we didn't talk about, is his dad that it that almost as if the devil actually is his father. Yes. Because he says to what appears to be his son, David Banner, you know, you were better off without him. Yeah. Which tells me that this is all taking place in the crossroads of the minds. This is all Joe Fixit, Professor Hulk territory. Um, and it's just about whether or not the Hulk figures that out yet. If yeah. you realize, it, it, basically, if we figure out that this is all in our minds, which I think he's sort of there. He's like, it's not really Rick. It's just a shadow. It's just a puppet. Yeah. But of course... And that's the thing, is like when they send Rick to him, there's not much of Rick left because it's been so long since the Hulk has really been with Rick. And he looks hollow and he's just like reciting yeah, and, old, old dialogue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and but for Ross, it's still it's still fresh, it's still real, it's still mm -hmm. visceral. And I think as it goes on, you know, and I think I think Puck is gonna give us this insight here, because Puck is Puck is clearly the guy I <laughs> I fought devils before. Yeah. This, yeah. this is what you got. This is what you brought. This is what you brought to Puck. Fight Puck. No. Yeah, um. I, I think it's just the uh, uh, too. Again, it's the it's because of the Hulk. You know, they're basically trying to torture him. Look what you did. did this poor innocent didn't deserve hell, but because of you, he's in hell, and it's it's basically taking him apart. But <laughs> it's just making Ross stronger. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, and, and I think maybe that's maybe even the argument there. Like I said, this is all within Banner's unconsciousness because there is this, you know, the green door may have been in Banner's mind the whole time. Yeah, maybe. Maybe what we've actually done is just opened up the door into Banner's mind. Oh, yeah, that, that's what they even said. Maybe it's Banner like, was the mutant. <laughs> well, that's that thing. It's all, you know, that we've talked about before. It's like, you know, the... That's that theory that the Hulk and everything has always been there in Banner. The Gamma Bomb just gave the Hulk physical form. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Uh, anyway, that would be that. I mean, that that's an entire possibility, and I think I, I'm excited by where it's going because it's just some great writing. It's fantastic artwork, and I never really comment on the artwork. But oh yeah, this is got, and I love the fact they still have this sort of um, clearly weakened but still Hulk like Hulk. Where it's like his arms are all scrawny, but he's still got these gigantic shoulders. It's like, because what it, I mean, it makes sense if you think about it, because it's like, this is the bone structure underneath all those muscles. And that basically you need those big, broad shoulders to hold all that muscle, but you, even those have shrunk. And so he actually almost has this almost hunched over qual quality, you know, which is, it's, it's a neat, it's a neat look they gave the Hulk here. Um, and I really, I really love the way they're, they're yeah. approaching him. And I mean, it's, it's, it's it, I mean, he only has like really one or two patterns to change into, but I mean, the Hulk's basically a shapeshifter. Yeah, well, exactly, and well, very much a shapeshifter. And um, I'm loving Jackie McGee in it. I love how they deal with her psychological issues in it. And it's like, you know, would you step in a gamma would... machine? <laughs> yeah, of course you'd step in a gamma machine. Who wouldn't? You know what? If there was a cosmic ray device, even if there was a forty percent chance, even a fifty percent, sixty percent chance. I'd become a thing. I might take it, you know. And and you know what? I might be like Ben Gurman, just stay a thing. Because if you switch your switch bodies, you you, you fracture your persona. That's what the thing is always afraid of. That he's going to fracture his persona. Which is why when he went and when he went into that little psychological thing, the last time he stopped becoming, because uh, he was a brief period where he could turn back and forth again, and then you know as you do. And, you... and basically what happens is that when you do that, then you separate the personas. And when you become the thing, you become all that anger and violence and, yes. and, and, and damage. And, of course, that's not what Ben wants to be. And so you see 
And I think when we manipulated that whole thing, created the virtual reality thousand years in the future thing, and the little pops popped off of them, that was meant to say, no, see, there is good in the thing. You could just be a good thing and be Ben Grimm. You don't have to have the supporting personality. I think that's the constant problem is that for people that change, they have a hard time. Okay. Um, was there anything else to talk about? Uh, did, well, did you say you read Infinity Wars Omega? Number? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And they are... And this is, I think, one of these subtle ways where the movies influence the film, or the movies influence the comics, and the comics influence the uh, the films. Because as we said uh, last week, that there was this thing added to the official Loki canon in the Marvel wiki page of it, that he was being manipulated by the Mind Stone. Because I think in the MCU, these stones are... Sent, are sentient and make decisions and choose who will they will come to and who they will work with. Because I, and now they, yeah, the minute I read this, I thought it. I thought of that conversation because yeah, the Adam Warlock trying to kick, uh, protect the Infinity Stones. That, you know, instead of giving them to an, an Infinity Watch again, it's like here the Soul Stone can give agency to all the stones and they can you know be like yeah, be their own thing. Which is great until you realize that you know. Why do we assume all these soul, these stones are going to have anyone else's best interest in heart? Exactly, yeah, because that never backfires in your face like when a cosmic cube or something evolves. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, well, you know, well, I mean, not for nothing. The evolved cosmic cubes, for the most part, have actually been pretty decent beings. Yes, Although yes. they are easily, you know, they are easily brought into villainous pursuits by villains because, you know, and this guy who can stop time, who was a convicted murderer, Says he didn't do it, maybe he didn't. But he was clearly running in circles that made people think he could have been the killer. So, um, within that circle, now that he can stop time, I'm certain he's only going to use that power for goodness and righteousness. As an example. I mean, I'm so, sure story-wise he's innocent, but yeah, I mean, he's it's basically, you know, a convicted killer's... Yeah. Well, yeah, and like I, it's like I said, usually when you are a convicted killer... It's not because you were just this great upstanding guy and there was no yeah. evidence against you. It's usually because you were maybe a ne'er do well, not a killer. Not a killer by any means, but you probably were a ne'er do well and you were doing ne'er well. Hanging with a bad crowd. <laughs> and it became easy to frame you for that murder or do you at least come to the conclusion that you were the murderer. Yes. And so, you know, now that this person who was wrongfully convicted probably has a bit of a grudge mm. that has been given infinite cosmic power. I'm sure nothing bad will happen next. <laughs> Let's find out, shall we? <laughs> okay, but that was Infinity Watch or uh, uh, Infinity Wars Omega or whatever they called it. Um, it was great. Uh, Loki gets tossed out of the boat. That was fun. Um, <laughs> and Loki isn't telling anyone what he saw on the other side when he saw the god above all god or whatever it was. You know? It was just some old guy sitting there saying, Excelsior! <laughs> uh, who knows? Um, they've done that gag before. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, actually, I think he probably saw it and it was just himself. Or, you know, it was. <laughs> he realized, oh, it's just a bunch of people in a room writing. It's like some sort of bullpen of some sort. No. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, no, that was, I mean, it was, it was good. It, I mean, obviously, it's too short, it's filler. Sets up something, whether or not they ever speak of it again, who knows? Well, again, like you were saying, probably retcon for the for the movie universe, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, yes, and clearly, like I said, clearly the Stones make choices, because they choose to be active or they choose to be inactive. And what will be interesting is if these Stones stop working for the people. So like, it might be that the Stone frees this guy from prison, then suddenly he, the Stone's like, mm, you're doing too much bad with me, I'm going to leave you now, you know? Because you can't control the stone. The stone isn't its only affecting you. So we'll see how that goes. It's exciting, Phil. It's a great time to be a comic book fan if oh, you yeah. like Marvel Comics. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only hear bad things about DC. So it's like, you know. <laughs> Although I, it's still like Justice League Dark. It's a good series. I just have to get the store and pick it up. I'm sure a new one's out by now. Anyway, okay. Uh, Philip, anything else you want to say tonight? No, I think we're good. <laughs> yeah, we ran way long, and I can see you telling your wife, I still love you, I promise, but Charlie won't stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> we can see you mouthing the words on the YouTube, Philip. You can say, It'll be just a minute, I promise. We're going to end this soon. <laughs> no, we're good. Yes. Blink twice if you're in danger. Ah! 
<laughs> Listen, oh, okay. Keep anyway. some lunatics for that. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. Well, you might you know, blanket your wife if you need her to come in and stop. <laughs> stop it, Charlie. Let him go. Um, okay. So, Philip, how can people find you if they would like to help? Help you free yourself of this horror that is talking to me. Uh, you can always get a hold of me, NightwingPDP at gmo.com. On Twitter, I am at NightwingPDP. And remember, you can follow Capes and Lunatics and Super Connectivity on uh, Facebook, Twitter, all the social medias. Mm-hmm. Of course, you can write to me in the old fashioned email, the way or my awesome positive ones today at Super Connectivity Blog at gmo.com. Super Connectivity Blog, all one word, at gmo.com. And of course, follow me on the Twitters. When I can and actually do, and not podcast other things, at Charlie Esser. That's C H A R L I E. S L C R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! <laughs> there we go. For quality. Hey, cats and kittens. This has been Super Connectivity. Please, super connect with us again next week. Good night. Good night. There we go. That was a fun show. Yes, it was. It was a fun show. It, it's always a fun show. Yeah. I like talking to you, Philip. I do not know how you talk to us all. I hope you actually enjoy that. I hope this isn't... I a, do. A, a, a good, good. Well, you know... If I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't do 20 shows if I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, you know. Well, they say that one of the hardest things for, for men as they age uh, is to connect with people. So that is why I'm grateful for podcasts. Because I get to connect with all you youngins. It's great. <laughs>